Christian Wood is a Los Angeles Lakers. Let's talk about it. So Christian Wood signed with the Lakers, a two-year deal with the second year being a player option, in total $5.7 million. So although there have been rumors for weeks now about the Lakers signing Christian Wood, there was no movement, like nothing was happening, so we all were a little confused. So let's evaluate if this is a good pickup for the Lakers. Christian Wood is someone where if you need some offense, he can get it done. Like, he was averaging like 18 in last year or something like that. Christian Wood on the Rockets, in my opinion, was the best form of Christian Wood, I guess if you want to say that. Like, he's still, what is he, 29 now? Like, he's still in his prime, technically. But I'm saying, like, when he was on the Rockets, the first year he was on the Rockets, or was it the second year? <laughs> one of the two years, I forget which one. He was really, really good, like... It was at the time where they didn't have Alperin Sengun, so it might have been his first year, where he was more of the focal point. Like, he wasn't the only focal point, but he was more of the focal point on the on the team, in the offense, and you saw Christian Wood putting on a show, like, a lot of nights. Offensively, Christian Wood is gifted. He shot 38% from three last year with the Mavericks, which is pretty good, especially for someone who's his size, 6'10 or whatever. Like, to be able to shoot almost 40% from three, is a really good quality to have. The Lakers like to be big, or at least in recent memory they do. Because, <laughs> you know, you got Anthony Davis and LeBron in the front court. You know, like, for example, in their championship year, they had Anthony Davis in the front court with Dwight Howard or JaVel McGee. So now you're kind of doing something like that. I think Christian Wood actually might be 6'9". But the point is, like, they're going to have Anthony Davis and Christian Wood side by side, most likely. Actually, they said Jackson Hayes is probably going to start. Another really tall player. So... They may not play a ton of minutes side by side, Anthony Davis and Christian Wood, but they will at some point. I think in terms of the Lakers, you know, with LeBron always wanting to have three-point shooters around him, this makes sense in terms of that. Bringing in someone who can shoot the three, who is very capable of it, and if he's wide open, he should be able to make them. I know this sounds like a weird question because it's not like they have, like for example, on Phoenix, a question that I have and a lot of people have is, is there enough ball to go around? For Durant, Booker, Beal, and then don't forget about DeAndre Ayton. Like, he wants to score too. And on the Lakers, like, it's not the same scenario, but at the same time, like, is there enough ball to go around at a certain point? Because you know LeBron is going to, like, do what LeBron does, obviously. And then they obviously want Anthony Davis to be dominant. That is what they want. So they're going to try to make him the number one, number two option with LeBron, depending on the night. Austin Reeves, you saw they started to give him a lot of responsibility handling the ball. He was lighting it up in the playoffs. So, like, I think they're going to want to continue him on that path. And then Rui in the playoffs was awesome, too. So I'm sure he expects a bigger role as well. So those are just four players right there. And that's not including some of the newer players. I'm assuming Jackson Hayes is going to want to get involved, too. So my question would only kind of be maybe is, is there enough ball to go around? Because Christian Wood is one of those guys who wants to get into rhythm, like, I mean, like, he's not saying, like, oh, if I don't score 20 a night, I'm not going to play, I'm, I'm going to pout. Like, I'm not saying he's trying to do that. But what I'm saying is, like, I feel like he wants to get reps, he wants to get touches, and he may get plenty of reps and touches. I don't know. I don't know exactly how they're going to run their offense yet and stuff like that. But that would be a slight concern to me, because Christian was one of those players where you want him to get touches because you want him to be in rhythm because that is when he's most effective. On defense, I think we all like have the same concerns. Obviously, Christian Wood is not the most elite defender and the Lakers definitely needed more defense in the playoffs and stuff like that. Like, I mean, nobody could guard Jokic period, so like it is what it is, but they definitely could use some more defense in general. I think for what they got him for, like given the fact that he was on a decently large salary before that and he still averaged like 18 last year and stuff like that the fact that he went for I don't know if this this is not really considered a vet minimum I guess like it's probably it's more than a vet minimum but it's not like too much more I'm not exactly sure what it's called because he got 5.7 million total which split between the two of them is probably like 2.4 and 3 point something right so for what they paid him to play for their team given the fact that he averaged 18 last year, the fact that he's a really gifted offensive player, I mean, you can't really beat that. It's like low risk, high reward. Like maybe it doesn't work out, but he's only there for one year. And maybe it does work out and you're like, we paid 2.7 million for a guy who should be paid X amount of dollars, like X more amount of dollars. It just depends on how they use him in the offense. Like I said, that's really my biggest question mark. 
sometimes it's not even just him. It's not just the Lakers. It's with certain situations, it's hard to like figure out exactly what their role is going to be on the team. Like, I'm not exactly sure what his role is going to be. Like, is he going to be a spot up shooter in the corner? Kind of like what they bring in for LeBron at times. Like Malik Beasley was brought in to be a spot up shooter. Obviously a little different player and stuff like that. But I'm just saying like, is, is that what they're trying to make him? Is that what they're trying to make his role? If that's solely his role, I'm not particularly a fan of that. I don't think that's the best way to do it. I feel like he needs to be more of a, I don't want to say a focal point because I'm not saying he should be the number one option over LeBron, over Anthony Davis, maybe not even over Austin Reeves and stuff like that. I just feel like he needs to be more, just more involved than just being a spot up shooter. Again, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm not saying that's what they're going to do. But I'm just saying, if that's the route they go, I don't think that's where he will be the most effective. I still don't get why they haven't brought back Dwight Howard. I don't get that. Like, I know what happened the last time that Dwight was there. Like, supposedly there was, I don't, I don't know exactly what the story was, so don't, like, quote me on this. But it was something, like, when he signed with the Sixers, or whatever team it was, I think it was the Sixers, where the Lakers were gonna pay, like, gonna give him a contract, and they didn't. It was like something like that. So like that aside, didn't he most recently say like he would love to come back into the NBA and play for the Lakers again? Say what you want about Dwight Howard, but Dwight Howard, number one in his prime, dominant. But even at this point in his career, like in the 2020 playoffs, he was one of their most important players. And Dwight Howard, one of the really good things about him for any team is that he will do the dirty work. He will clean up everything around the rim, you know, he may not be the shot blocker he once was, of course, because of, you know, the back injuries and just, you know, getting older. He still can protect the rim, still rebound the ball, and just do those things. Like, you need a guy on the team, on every team when you win, to be a player like that. To do all the little things that people don't really want to do. All winning championship teams, or at least most of them to my memory, have a guy who does that. Or someone who has a semblance of doing stuff like that. So I don't get why they don't bring in Dwight Howard as well. Like, I'm not talking about Christian Wood. I still think Christian Wood was a good pickup, especially for what they paid for him. Christian Wood, he has high upside for them. So I think Christian Wood was a good pickup. I'm just saying additionally, I just don't get why they didn't bring in Dwight Howard, why they don't bring him in. I don't know what the opposition to Dwight Howard is. I know Dwight Howard has apparently had a reputation around the league. You know, whatever. I like... I'm not there. I don't know what his reputation is. I'm not in the locker room. I don't know. I just know that based on his impact on that team and he's been around the Lakers, I don't know. I just I just don't get why Dwight Howard is not re-signed by them. But that's my opinion. Again, I don't know what goes on internally. So maybe there's something. I don't know. That's why I'm not going to say 100% they should sign him. I'm just saying I feel like from an impact standpoint, he could have one. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Christian Wood signing.